What's up, kings and queens? It's your girl, Shardell Moore. As always, we give thanks for another day, you dig? So as the CEO and founder of Motivational Moore, we take pride in working with incredible creative entrepreneurs. And today, we are shooting a campaign for cool green clothing founded by the one and only AC Green. So the vibrational energy of this line is all about street vibes, a growth mindset, hustle. So today, we are highlighting this, guys, the Baltimore Cool Green Snapback. Ah! How cute is this? Look at this. <laughs> so we're going to have so much fun on this shoot. And I'm telling you, follow Cool Green Clothing. It's so important for us to support our entrepreneurs. There's so much talent in Baltimore. And as a creative entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it is. And I love to see just people going out there and going for their dreams. So let's get it. Let's What's up, Two Times fam? It's your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and we are back with another episode of The Baltimore Way. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to join the Two Times okay. family. Tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to get notified of all uploads. Be sure to like this video if you're rocking with the content. Comment down below and share your thoughts. Of course, always keeping it respectful. Feel free to share this video. Make sure you watch until the end to hear the full story. In this episode, we will be discussing the case of a young mother-to-be whose life was taken at the hands of her fiance and the father of her unborn child, according to investigators. All right? Let's get right into it. On June 27, 2017, at 12.33 a.m., a resident of the apartment complex on the 3900 block of Liberty Heights Avenue in Northwest Baltimore called 911 and reported hearing multiple gunshots and a woman yelling. A Baltimore City police officer responded and canvassed the area but the officer found no one discharging a firearm, so they left. At around 1.45 a.m. that same evening, the same officer returned to the apartment complex in response to another 911 call. The 911 caller reported that he was laying in his apartment when he heard a loud crash coming from his kitchen area. He went to check to see what the crash was and he found a suspect laying on his kitchen floor covered in blood. A Baltimore police detective said, according to sources, the man was armed with a knife. The detective said when the 911 caller actually went to render aid to the mysterious man, the man turned on him, ambushed him, and made threats and chased him outside at which point the caller was able to get away and call police. The 911 caller wasn't hurt, but nevertheless shook up, I'm sure. When the officers arrived, they saw a man sitting on the concrete steps of the building. Officers later identified the man as William Mason. Mr. Mason had multiple lacerations on his face and arms and was wearing a bloody sock. A crime scene technician arrived and recovered the man's bloody sock and sent a swab of it for DNA processing. Officers arrested Mr. Mason and took him to Sinai Hospital. According to medical records obtained by officials, Mr. Mason explained that he sustained his injuries after jumping through a window. At the time when police interviewed Mr. Mason, he did not provide any emergency contact or mention he had a girlfriend or fiance, and he didn't mention that anyone else besides himself could have been hurt. The records obtained by officials from the hospital indicated that Mr. Mason was released to Central Booking, but ended up returning to the hospital for further medical treatment. Later that day, the resident who initially reported the shots fired left their apartment for work and noticed that the door was open to the basement apartment. The resident also observed what looked like blood leading from the apartment to the front door of the apartment complex. When the apartment complex resident returned home from work that evening, they made the same observation. 
Then the resident's significant other called 911 and stated that there were shots fired coming from that apartment the night prior. They went on to tell the 911 dispatcher that the door to the basement apartment had been opened all day and there was a blood trail outside of the apartment. Officers arrived at the basement apartment at approximately 8.45 that evening and found the blood trail and bloody footprints outside of the basement apartment. As they walked inside the apartment and towards the bedroom, they found the body of a woman on the floor, later identified as 23-year-old Kaya Lambert, clad only in her undergarments and covered with a blanket. She was pronounced not alive at the scene. Near Kaya Lambert's body, police recovered two bloody handguns and matching shell casings. The officers then noticed what appeared to be a foot or sock impression in the blood on the floor. The responding officers saw evidence of a struggle in the bedroom, including a bunch of broken glass but no evidence of a struggle anywhere else in the apartment. Police learned that Kaya Lambert and Mr. Mason had been in a romantic relationship for about two years. According to sources, the couple jointly leased the basement apartment. Investigators also found out that the couple had just returned from a vacation in Miami. Police then obtained a search warrant from Mr. Mason's DNA and took his sample. According to reports, an autopsy of Kaya Lambert's body indicated that she was several weeks pregnant. The autopsy revealed she had sustained four shot wounds as well as multiple contusions and abrasions, including 26 sharp force injuries to the scalp, eight cutting wounds to the upper back, two cutting wounds to the right arm, and multiple cuts to her hands. The medical examiner ruled her passing a homicide. As investigators analyzed the evidence, no fingerprints were found on the two weapons recovered from the scenes. However, the lab analysis did reveal Kaya Lambert's DNA on both firearms and Mr. Mason's DNA on one of them. Swabs taken from the floor of the basement apartment and Mr. Mason's bloody sock contained DNA from both Mr. Mason and Kaya Lambert. William Mason was subsequently charged with the slaying of his girlfriend Kaya Lambert as well as assault. No motive to the crime was made clear. There was no history of domestic disputes between the couple. Mr. Mason was considered a law-abiding citizen before the arrest. He had no criminal record. William Mason went to trial in October 2018. With a slew of circumstantial evidence stacked up against him, including DNA and footprints, a Baltimore City grand jury found Mr. Mason guilty. In June 2019, he was sentenced to life plus 20 years, with the first five years to be served without parole. Mr. Mason later tried to appeal his conviction because of comments made about his demeanor in court by the state's attorney during closing arguments. However, his appeal was denied. The appeal courts decided that the state's comment would not have swayed the jury's decision because of the amount of circumstantial evidence presented in the case, and that the state assured jurors to focus on the evidence since that is all they really had to prove their case. There was absolutely no clear motive as to why Mr. Mason would commit such a heinous crime against the woman he claimed to love. As I mentioned before, there was no record of past disputes between the couple or anything. They had reportedly just came back from vacation in Miami. So what went wrong? Were they fighting? Did he snap? Why did he snap if he did? So many unanswered questions in this situation. It's just crazy how the events of that day played out and then to not know why is even more heart-wrenching. 
My deepest and sincerest condolences to Kaya Lambert's family and loved ones. I pray that they are able to find comfort and peace in her memories. I hope that they were able to have some closure. She was so young and absolutely beautiful. I'm sure she would have been a great mom. May Kaya Lambert and her unborn rest in peace. All right, fam, that's it for this video. Please tell me what you think about this situation in the comments below. I would love to hear your sentiments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm out.